Hello and welcome to English You Can Do. Today we are looking at safe and unsafe conversation topics. Uh, things you should and shouldn't talk about when you meet someone for the first time. Then a true and false game to get to know me, Tom. Let's start. So let's get to know me, Tom. And at the end, there's a true or false challenge. First, safe topics. What do you think? What are some safe topics you can talk about when you meet someone and want to get to know them? So how about age? Should you ask somebody their age? Maybe not. That's not safe. What is a safe topic? Pause the video, type your ideas, in the comments. Okay. So I mentioned age. That's probably unsafe. What are some unsafe topics you shouldn't talk about when you meet someone and want to get to know them? Again, pause the video, type your idea in the chat box in the comments. Okay, here are some different ideas. What do you think? Are these topics safe or unsafe? So I mentioned age. Mm, maybe age is not safe. What about the first one, sports? Yeah, I think sports is okay. So sports is a safe topic. Pause the video. Have a think. Are these safe or unsafe? Okay. Here is what I think. So safe topics, sports, hobbies, the weather, hometown, work, study, food, travel, music, seasons, movies, and many others. And unsafe topics, religion, money, marriage, Weight, age, health problems, personal details. Of course, this depends on the situation, who you are speaking to. But in general, I think these are generally safe topics and the other topics probably unsafe. unsafe. So let's start the challenge first. Listen to Tom tell you about himself. Okay, so you have to listen to me and with a pen and paper, write down as much information as you can. We will listen two times. Are you ready? Let's start. Just a moment. Okay. As you know, my name is Tom. I am originally from near Manchester in the UK. Now I live in Korea and it's great. My favorite sport is basketball and my favorite music is K-pop. I am an English teacher and teach at a high school. I love it because the students are so nice. This weekend, I'm going shopping with my son to buy clothes for our next vacation. Okay, let's listen one more time. Make notes. As you know, my name is Tom. I am originally from near Manchester in the UK. Now I live in Korea and it's great. My favorite sport is basketball and my favorite music is K-pop. I am an English teacher and teach at a high school. I love it because the students are so nice. This weekend, I'm going shopping with my son to buy clothes for our next vacation. Okay, what information did you hear? 
Okay, here is what I said. Okay, as you know, my name is Tom. Uh, okay, have a look. This information, if it's underlined, Tom, Manchester, UK, you have to decide, is it true or false? So which information do you think is true and which information is not true? Eight things are true, seven things are false. Okay, have a look, pause the video, have a guess. Eight true, seven false. Okay, if you need more time, pause the video or let's check. Okay, Tom, Manchester, UK, English teacher, love it, nice, shopping son, true, Korea, basketball, K-pop, high school, weekend clothes and next vacation, not true. Let's listen one more time. As you know, my name is Tom. I am originally from near Manchester in the UK. Now I live in Korea and it's great. My favorite sport is basketball and my favorite music is K-pop. I am an English teacher and teach at a high school. I love it because the students are so nice. This weekend, I'm going shopping with my son to buy clothes for our next vacation. Okay, great. So quickly have a pause. Can you think of what's the true information? So not basketball. I'm from the UK, so probably my favorite sport is... Okay, let's see. Hey, listen to me, repeat, and I'll say the true information. Repeat after me. As you know, my name is Tom. I'm originally from near Manchester in the UK. Now I live in Japan and it's great. My favorite sport is soccer. And my favorite music is British rock. I'm an English teacher and teach at a university. I love it because the students are so nice. Next weekend, I'm going shopping with my son to buy a bag for school. Okay, nice. Oh, my age. Uh, is that a safe topic? Unsafe? Okay, I'm, uh, I'm 20 three years old yeah i'm 23 years old yes okay that's it for today thank you so much check out the channel lots of other interesting and useful videos and see you next time in the next english you can do video thank you and goodbye Hello, welcome to another video, English You Can Do. Today, city life versus country life is our topic. There'll be some vocabulary, pronunciation practice, and then listening and shadowing. Let's get started. English You Can Do, city versus country. So first, think of some good points and bad points of living in the city and country and then write your ideas down in the comments below for example cities are convenient but noisy country life is peaceful but maybe boring what do you think write down your ideas in the comments okay here are some words for you have a look. What do you think? 
are these words related to city life or country life? Rural, traffic, crowded, hmm, or both? Pause the video, have a quick think. Okay, let's check the meaning and some examples. Repeat after me. Rural. Rural. Okay, it's an adjective. It describes the countryside. For example, repeat. Outside the city is very rural. Outside the city is very rural. Next. Traffic. Traffic. It's a noun, so cars, bikes, trucks, wagons, vans, all these together is traffic. Repeat after me. There's so much traffic in my city. There's so much traffic in my city. Next. Crowded. Crowded. Adjective means full of people, lots and lots of people. Repeat. This restaurant is too crowded. Let's go. This restaurant is too crowded. Let's go. Public transport. Public transport. So buses, trains, subway, uh, all these types of transport, which you can buy a ticket, is public transport. Repeat. Tokyo has excellent public transport. Tokyo has excellent public transport. The village doesn't have any public transport. The village doesn't have any public transport. And sometimes you might see public transportation. It's the same. Convenient. Convenient. So if something matches your needs, what you need, and it's no trouble to do it or get it, it's convenient. Repeat. Shopping is so convenient in the city. Shopping is so convenient in the city. Driving is so convenient in the country. Driving is so convenient in the country. Urban. Urban. So rural describes the country, urban describes cities and towns. For example, repeat, New York is extremely urban. New York is extremely urban. Things to do. Things to do. Basically, the activities, what's available, what you can do. Repeat. There are lots of things to do here. There are lots of things to do here. There is nothing to do in my friend's town. There is nothing to do in my friend's town. City centre. Town centre. This is the, the central, the downtown, the middle of a city or a town. Repeat. The town centre is so quiet at night. The town centre is so quiet at night. The city centre is very busy on Saturday. The city centre is very busy on Saturday.
Okay. So, listen to Tom tell you about his hometown. My hometown. First, look at the pictures. What do you think it is like? Can you predict? Okay, pause the video, have a look. What do you think? Is it urban? Is it convenient? Have a quick think. Comments in the comment section. Okay. So listen to Tom tell you about his hometown. We will listen twice, two times. Make a note, write down all the words and information you hear. Okay, are you ready? Let's listen. Number one. My hometown is Charwoodge in the UK. It's quite rural, but there can be lots of traffic on Saturday in the town centre. It's quite a convenient place to live with good public transport. However, it's not as convenient as bigger towns and cities. There aren't a lot of things to do, but that's okay because that means it's not crowded with people. Overall, I love Charwoodge, but would like to live in a more urban place someday. Okay, let's listen one more time. Make your notes. My hometown is Charwoodge in the UK. It's quite rural, but there can be lots of traffic on Saturday in the town centre. It's quite a convenient place to live with good public transport. However, it's not as convenient as bigger towns and cities. There aren't a lot of things to do, but that's okay because that means it's not crowded with people. Overall, I love Charwoodge, but would like to live in a more urban place someday. Okay, finish your notes. And here it is. This is the full script. Can you find the vocabulary from before? My hometown is quite ah, rural. Lots of ah, traffic. Can you find the other words? Okay, here are the other words. So, uh, this time you can repeat after me and practice some shadowing. Listen and repeat. My hometown is Charwoodge in the UK. It's quite rural, but there can be lots of traffic on Saturday in the town centre. It's quite a convenient place to live with good public transport. However, it's not as convenient as bigger towns and cities. There aren't a lot of things to do, but that's okay. Because that means it's not crowded with people. Overall, I love Charwoodge. But would like to live in a more urban place someday. Okay, that's it for uh, English, you can do city and country. In the comments, uh, tell me, tell us about your hometown. Use the vocabulary, write a couple of sentences, describe your hometown. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome to another video, English You Can Do. Today, wish you were here. Descriptive postcard writing. Vocabulary, pronunciation, listening, shadowing and writing. Let's start. 
Wish you were here. First, vacation activities. First, think of some things people do on vacation. For example, go sightseeing. Pause the video a couple of minutes. Write down your ideas in the comments. Okay, if you're ready, let's start. So here is today's vocabulary set. Have a think. Are they verbs, nouns, or adjectives? And what do they mean? Pause the video. Check your dictionary if you like. Have a think. Okay. If you're ready, let's check. Okay, here they are. Nouns, verbs, and adjectives. Let's check the meaning, the pronunciation, and then an example to repeat. Let's start. Okay, so the first one, uh, sightseeing means visiting different tourist spots. Repeat after me. Sightseeing. Sightseeing. Okay, example, repeat. I love sightseeing when I visit a new city. I love sightseeing when I visit a new city. Next. Okay, souvenirs. So these are the things you buy to remember the place you visit. And often we give souvenirs. We buy something when we travel and then we give souvenirs. Repeat, souvenirs, souvenirs. Example, what a really nice souvenir. Thank you. What a really nice souvenir. Thank you. Next, water park. So like a theme park, but with pools and water slides, lazy rivers, rubber rings, things like that. Repeat, water park, water park. Example, this is such a cool water park. This is such a cool water park. Next, sunbathe. So this means to lie in the sun, uh, on the beach, by the pool, to get a tan. A tan when your skin turns browner. Sunbathe. Sunbathe. Example. I don't like to sunbathe. It's too boring. I don't like to sunbathe. It's too boring. Okay, next, Incredible. Uh, maybe you know the movie, Incredibles. <laughs> so amazing, wonderful, fantastic, terrific. These mean the same. Incredible. Incredible. Example. The beaches there are incredible. So white. The beaches there are incredible. So white. Okay, culture. So this is the, the arts, the music, traditions, uh, food, uh, clothes of a, of a place. Repeat. Culture. Culture. Example. I really like Spanish cafe culture. I really like Spanish cafe culture. Okay, eat out. So, like it sounds, it means eating outside of your house in another place, a restaurant, a cafe, not at home. 
and we can join the words together. So not eat out, you can say eat out. Eat out. Example, I eat out there because it's very good. I eat out there because it's very good. Okay, last one, market. So the place where you can buy local food, uh, crafts, souvenirs, sometimes clothes, um, and other things. Repeat, market, market. Example, this is such an interesting market. This is such an interesting market. Okay, right, let's look. Wish you were here. Imagine when you're on holiday, on vacation, what kind of things do we write when on vacation? Hmm. Okay, I have three examples. You might write a letter, postcards, social media messages these days. Today, we are going to practice postcards. So, listen to Tom read out a postcard he recently sent. Okay, I will read out a postcard, get a pen and paper, make some notes, and try and write down any words you hear. It's okay if you don't catch everything, just as much as you can. Ready? Let's start. Hi, Richard. Hey, how are you? We are having a really nice time here. There is lots of culture and incredible things to see and do. Alana really likes water parks, so she is there. But it's too hot for me, so I am at the local market. The fruit is so delicious, and it's very cheap. Maybe I will buy some souvenirs. We are going to eat out for the... One more time. We are going to eat out tonight at a very popular local restaurant. Tomorrow, we will go sightseeing in the town centre. Alana wants to go to the beach, but it's too far from the hotel. Anyway, wish you were here. See you soon. Tom. Okay. If you want to listen again, pause the video and go back. If not, let's see. Hi, Richard. Hey, how are you? We are having a really nice time here. There is lots of culture and incredible things to see and do. Alana really likes water parks, so she is there. But it's too hot for me, so I am at the local market. The fruit is so delicious and it's very cheap. Maybe I will buy some souvenirs. We are going to eat out tonight at a very popular local restaurant. Tomorrow, we will go sightseeing in the town center. Alana wants to go to the beach, but it's too far from the hotel. Anyway, wish you were here. See you soon, Tom. Okay. One more time. Listen again and repeat after me. Hi, Richard. Hey, how are you? We are having a really nice time here. There is lots of culture and incredible things to see and do. Alana really likes water parks, so she is there. But it's too hot for me, so I am at the local market. The fruit is so delicious, and it's very cheap. Maybe I will buy some souvenirs. We are going to eat out tonight at a very popular local restaurant. 
Tomorrow, we will go sightseeing in the town centre. Alana wants to go to the beach. But it's too far from the hotel. Anyway, wish you were here. See you soon. Tom. Okay, nice. So, when writing, we want to make our writing more descriptive. Adds more interesting vocabulary, makes it more interesting to read. So in the postcard, I used intensifiers to make the postcard more descriptive. Can you find them? For example, really is an intensifier. There are five. Have a look. Okay. Such a really too so very and here's the vocabulary from before so what do these mean well they add extra emphasis first can you check the grammar pause the video can you match these up Match, one, two, three, A, B, C, match. If you need to check, go back. Okay, let's check. Okay, so really plus adjective, really good, very good, so good, really expensive, very tasty, so beautiful. Such a, plus adjective plus noun, such a nice place. And then too, plus adjective, has a negative meaning. Too hot, too expensive, too noisy. So you can use the postcard I wrote as your example, as your model, in the comments. Write a postcard and include vacation activities, uh, descriptive intensifiers, and adjectives. Okay, that's it for today. English You Can Do. Wish you were here. See you next time, everyone. Good bye. Okay, welcome to a new video, English You Can Do. Today, talking about celebrations, vocabulary, pronunciation, and listening. Let's start. Talk about celebrations. So first, have a think of some vocabulary related to festivals and celebrations. It could be food and drink, activities, clothes, or other, any vocabulary. Pause the video, write down some words in the comments. Okay, here are my ideas. So for example, turkey, giving presents, Santa hat, singing carols. Okay, that would be a good vocabulary set for Christmas. So today we're going to look at how to talk about food, activities and clothes for festivals and celebrations. Here is today's vocabulary set. Have a think. Are they verbs, nouns or adjectives? And what do they mean? Quick pause. What do you think? Okay, here are the answers. So, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight words. Let's check the meaning and pronunciation. Cheer. Okay, that means to shout for joy and excitement. Yay, cheer. For example, the children cheered when Santa arrived. 
The children cheered when Santa arrived. Cheer. Dance. Okay, move your body to the music. For example, people dance in the streets during the festival. People dance in the streets during the festival. Dance. Okay, a festival float. Okay, it's a small vehicle carrying something. Like in New York, New Year's Eve parade. There are many festival floats at the parade. There are many festival floats at the parade. Festival float. Food stalls. Okay, it's a stand for selling things. Food, different types of food. So many food stalls. I don't know what to get. So many food stalls. I don't know what to get. Traditional. Okay, this is something that's done every generation. You do it, your parents do it, your grandparents did it. There are many traditional events in summer. There are many traditional events in summer. Folk music. Okay, this is music from traditional popular culture. So for example, Chinese folk music is very old. Chinese folk music is very old. Folk music. Shaved ice. Okay, this is a sweet kind of dessert made of crushed shaved ice. I think it's also called an ice cream cone, maybe. For example, shaved ice is my favorite summer food. Shaved ice is my favorite summer food. Street food. Okay, this is food bought outside from food stalls. What street food shall we get? I'm so hungry. What street food shall we get? I'm so hungry. Okay, first then, let's do some listening. Listen to a Japanese summer festival and celebration. First, have a look at the pictures. What do you think people do at the festival? Okay, pause the video. Have a quick think. What can you see? Okay. So, listen to Tom. I'm going to read out what people do at this festival and make some notes. Are you ready? Let's start. Let me tell you about summer festival celebrations in Japan. They are so much fun and still very traditional. In Tochigi and Gunma, people dance and cheer around the festival floats to traditional folk music. This is called Yagibushi. There are lots of food stalls selling street food. My favorite is yakisoba. It's a type of noodle dish with vegetables and pork. It's so good. However, Japan is too hot in summer, so I keep cool by eating strawberry shaved ice. Okay. If you want to listen again, pause the video, go back. If you're ready, here it is. Okay, repeat after me. 
let me tell you about summer celebrations in Japan. They are so much fun and still very traditional. In Tochigi and Gunma, people dance and cheer around the festival floats to traditional folk music. This is called Yagibushi. There are lots of food stalls selling street food. My favorite is yakisoba. It's a type of noodle dish with vegetables and pork. It's so good. However, Japan is too hot in summer. So I keep cool by eating strawberry shaved ice. Okay, great. And that's our vocabulary. It's amazing. I recommend it. Google, have a look. If you go on YouTube, you can see the dance. Yagibushi. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, leave a comment. What's your favorite summer festival? Okay, everyone. Thank you so much. And see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello, welcome to a new video. Today, English you can do. We're looking at prepositions of time. On, at, in, in, at, on, at, in, on. Let's get started. Prepositions of time. So, prepositions of time, uh, we use these in, on, and at to describe the time. Have a look, in, on, at. Pause the video and just have a look for a minute and can you match? When do we use in, on, and at? Okay, are you ready? Here are the answers. Okay, in is with month, in January, in February, year. In 1999, in 2023, and season, in summer, in spring. Okay, on is with the day, on Monday, on Tuesday, on my birthday. Date, on December 25th, on August 7th, and weekend. I will see her on the weekend. And at is used for time, at 7 o'clock, at 10.45, and night time, at night. I do my homework at night. Okay. So let's listen to some information about important international festivals. First, look at the script. Can you fill in the gaps with in, on, or at. Okay, here are the four festivals. Uh, wedding in China, Christmas Day, Ramadan, and the Day of the Dead. Pause the video. Uh, can you fill in the gaps with in, on, or at? If you need to, go back and check. Okay, pause the video. Okay, if you're ready, listen to me. I will read out the script and fill in the gaps. Ready? Let's go. In Mexico, the Day of the Dead is celebrated in November. In 2003, on November 7th, it was recognized by UNESCO. Number two. During Ramadan, Muslims can eat at night, after the sun has gone down. The date changes, so Ramadan can be in any season. Number three. Christmas is on the 25th of December every year. The queen or king 
gives a speech on TV at 3 p.m. every year. Number four. In China, on their wedding day, people eat long noodles, as long noodles are thought to be lucky. Okay, did you get the answers? Go back and listen again. If you're ready, here they are. Okay, in 2003, on November 7th, at night, in any season. All right. Great. So just one last thing. There is a difference between British English and American English. So when we say the date, there is a difference between British and American English. So have a think. What is the order of the dates in American English? In Mexico, da, 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 in 2003, on, on November 7th. Okay. What is the order of dates in British English? Christmas is on the 25th of December. Okay, it's very slightly different. So American English is month plus day. November 7th. January 1st. December 25th. British English is the day of month. The 25th of December. The 1st of January. The 8th of August. And you need to use the and of. So just have a think. Practice saying the date in American English and British English. For example, when's your birthday? Oh, my birthday is October 12th. Or my birthday is the 12th of October. So have a think of those different uh, questions. Maybe leave a comment in the comments. Okay. Okay, that's it for today. Um, go back through the other English You Can Do videos, postcard writing, safe, unsafe topics. There are lots of useful videos. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much and see you next time. Bye. Bye. Okay, welcome to a new video. Today we're looking at sentence stress and dialogue stress. So the words that are stressed in a everyday conversation and dialogue. Let's get started. Sentence stress, dialogue stress. So in English, some words are often stressed more than others. For example, Important words or keywords in a sentence, which are often nouns and verbs. Have a look at this sentence. Can you find the nouns and verbs? Let's see. Shall we see the new horror film? Shall we see the new horror film? Okay, so C is a verb. Horror film is a noun, a compound noun. Also, negatives are often stressed. Words like don't, not, won't, can't, haven't, shouldn't. These are often stressed. For example, I'm not sure. I don't really like horror movies. I'm not sure. I don't really like horror movies. Okay. Also, question words. So words we use to ask questions are often stressed. For example, what, how, where, when, who, etc. For example,
How about we see the comedy? I heard it was really funny. How about we see the comedy? I heard it was really funny. Okay, then in a conversation, in a dialogue, sometimes the speakers will contrast each other. For example, I heard X. Well, I heard Y. So speakers will contrast each other. So for example, really? Well, I heard it was boring. Really? Well, I heard it was boring. Okay. And any words we want to emphasize, to add emphasis to, which often are descriptive words like adverbs and adjectives, these can also be stressed. Okay. So, I really want to do something fun. What shall we do? I really want to do something fun. What shall we do? So we have important words, negatives, question words, showing contrast and adding emphasis. These are all commonly stressed in a dialogue, in a conversation. And the last thing is making a suggestion. So what is that? So in English, a suggestion is an idea to help solve a problem or an idea of something to do. Pause the video, go back. There have been two, there are two suggestions we have seen so far. Can you go back and find them? Okay, the two that I used already were shall we, how about we? So again, it's a type of question. And when we make a suggestion, we can stress it. Shall we go to the festival? How about we go to the festival? By the way, not all suggestions are questions. For example, let's is a suggestion. Let's go to the festival. That's not a question, but again, it's another phrase for making a suggestion. Okay, let's put those all together. So important words, negatives, question words and suggestions, showing contrast and adding emphasis. Here is our full dialogue. Pause the video, say the words, uh, the sentences, the dialogue. Which words do you think are stressed? Okay, have a try. Okay, if you're ready, let's see. Shall we see the new horror film? I'm not sure. I don't really like horror movies. How about we see the comedy? I heard it was really funny. Really? Well, I heard it was boring. I really want to do something fun. What shall we do? How about we go to the festival? Festival? That sounds great. Okay, one more time. You can repeat after me. Shall we see the new horror film? I'm not sure. I don't really like horror movies. How about we see the comedy? I heard it was really funny. Really? Well, I heard it was boring. I really want to do something fun. 
what shall we do? How about we go to the festival? Festival? That sounds great. Okay, so this is just a, a guide on which words to stress. Um, like I said, the contrastive stress means that any words can actually be stressed. So follow the link and you can see a video about that. But yeah, take some time, practice the dialogue and see you next time. Thank you very much and bye bye. Hello, welcome to a new video. Today we are looking at showing intonation for surprise. So let's get started. So in English, we use intonation to react to something surprising, something really interesting, something amazing. How do we do that? So generally, we use a rising intonation. So your intonation goes up at the end of what you're saying. For example, with questions, repeat after me. Really? Really? Also, here are some other uh, reactions using a rising intonation. Really? Really? Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah? Yeah? Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Really, yeah? Oh, yeah? <laughs> so, uh, there are many other questions we can ask to show surprise. These are just four examples. Also, you can repeat what you hear back as a question using a rising intonation. For example, I'm going bungee jumping tomorrow. Really? Bungee jumping? Wow. So it's, yeah, it's showing surprise, showing interest. Really? Bungee jumping? That's cool. That's amazing. Also, when someone is talking to you, you can use a rising intonation to show that you're interested in what they're saying. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So there are many ways to do this. Here are two examples. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And of course, if you're really surprised and you want to react, wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Here are just some other examples. Of course, there are many. That's amazing. That's amazing. Wow. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So here are the three, four uh, main ways we can use our rising intonation to show surprise with questions. Really? Repeating. Really? Bungee jumping? To show interest. Uh-huh. And to show surprise. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay, let's put it all together with some practice. Have a look here. There is a short conversation between A and B about, yeah, about bungee jumping. Uh, so pause the video. Just read the dialogue, read the conversation. And can you find places where you can use a a rising intonation. Pause the video, have a think. Okay, if you're ready, 
Let's have a look. Listen carefully. Do you notice when I use a rising intonation? Hey, I'm going bungee jumping tomorrow. Really? Bungee jumping? Yeah, I'm going with Richard. Uh-huh. We are jumping off the river bridge. Oh, yeah? That's amazing. Have you ever done any extreme sports before? Okay, did you catch it? Here are the answers. Okay, repeat after me. I'm going bungee jumping tomorrow. Really? Bungee jumping? Yeah, I'm going with Richard. Uh-huh. We are jumping off the river bridge. Oh, yeah? That's amazing. Have you ever done any extreme sports before? Okay, so you can see a rising intonation uh, really shows how you feel. It shows that you're surprised. You think it's interesting, amazing. And uh -huh, it shows you're interested. So it's really good for your conversation skills. So let's have a look at that last question. Have you ever done any extreme sports before? In the comments, if you have, please let us know. Bungee jumping, skydiving, rock climbing, uh, mountain biking, skiing. What do you think? And here are two extreme sports that I have done. I've been white water rafting in Chile. What's your reaction? Really? That's amazing. Also, I've been skydiving in New Zealand. What's your reaction? Uh-huh. Oh my gosh, really? Okay. Just a quick video today. Um, I hope that's useful. Uh, so yes, remember, intonation is super important. It shows your mood. It shows how you feel. It can show if you believe something, if you don't believe something. Have a look through the channel. There are other videos on intonation. And that's all for today. Thank you so much and see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello, welcome to a new video. Today, we're looking at British English versus American English on the topic of education. For example, university, college. Let's start. So let's have a look and test our knowledge of British English. This video is for those who are more used to American English. Let's see how much British English you know. And the topic is education. So take a look at the list of American English words on the topic of education. Can you think of the British English version? For example, for example, American English, high school. British English, secondary school. So have a look. We have gym class, first floor, math, elementary school, lunch lady, college, and cafeteria. Can you think of the British English words? Pause the video, have a think. Okay, if you're ready, listen carefully. Can you hear the British English words? Ready? Let's start. Let me tell you about my secondary school life in the UK. I start the day by putting my stuff in my locker on the ground floor. My favourite classes are PE and art because they are fun. I liked maths and science when I was in primary school, but not these days because of the teachers. They are too strict. At lunchtime, we hang out in the canteen 
and talk about what universities we want to go to. Sometimes we make too much noise and the dinner lady tells us to be quiet. Shh. I love secondary school. Thanks to my friends. Okay. Did you hear the British English? Okay, let's try again. This time, here is the American English, but listen to the British English. Ready? One more time. Let's go. Let me tell you about my secondary school life in the UK. I start the day by putting my stuff in my locker on the ground floor. My favourite classes are PE and art because they are fun. I liked maths and science when I was in primary school, but not these days because of the teachers. They are too strict. At lunchtime, we hang out in the canteen and talk about what universities we want to go to. Sometimes we make too much noise and the dinner lady tells us to be quiet. Shh. I love secondary school, thanks to my friends. Did you catch it? Okay, one more time, listen carefully. And here are the American English words. Can you listen and catch the British English words? Let me tell you about my secondary school life in the UK. I start the day by putting my stuff in my locker on the ground floor. My favourite classes are PE and art because they are fun. I liked maths and science when I was in primary school, but not these days because of the teachers. They are too strict. At lunchtime, we hang out in the canteen and talk about what universities we want to go to. Sometimes we make too much noise and the dinner lady tells us to be quiet. Shh. I love secondary school, thanks to my friends. Okay, pause the video, go back if you want to listen again. If you're ready for the answers, here they are. Okay, we've got secondary school, ground floor, PE, maths, primary school, canteen, universities, dinner lady, and again, secondary school. Okay, so I should say that these are typically American English words, typically British English words, but uh, some people in different parts of the US, different parts of the UK might uh, use both. So it's not always correct, but these are generally British and, Amer and British and American words. Okay, quick shadowing, repeat after me. Let me tell you about my secondary school life in the UK. I start the day by putting my stuff in my locker on the ground floor. My favorite classes are PE and art because they are fun. I liked maths and science when I was in primary school, but not these days because of the teachers. They are too strict. At lunchtime, we hang out in the canteen and talk about what universities we want to go to. Sometimes we make too much noise and the dinner lady tells us to be quiet. I love secondary school, thanks to my friends. Okay, great. If you want to practice more, go back, listen again and repeat. Uh, just one thing, giving reasons. So we can use these phrases to give reasons. Because, because of, thanks to. 
So I want you to pause the video, go back. What reasons does the speaker give? So because, because of, and thanks to. Okay, let's see. My favorite classes are PE and art because they are fun. I liked maths and science when I was in primary school, but not these days because of the teachers. They are too strict. I love secondary school, thanks to my friends. Here we go. Classes are PE and art because they are fun. They are fun, S-V-O. Because of the teachers, thanks to my friends. Okay. Okay, if you want more practice with British English, um, there are some links in the description. Also, Australian English, link in the description. That's it for today. Uh, thank you so much and see you next time. Thank you and goodbye. Bye-bye. Hello, welcome to a new video. Today we're looking at weak forms, particularly using the word to. Let's get started. Weak forms, to. So weak forms are syllable sounds that become unstressed in connected speech and are often pronounced as a schwa, uh, the schwa sound, which is a very weak uh, uh sound. For example, teacher, a uh, uh, teacher. So have a look at these four examples and just pause the video, say the examples. What do you notice about the way you pronounced two? Okay, listen to me. Give it to them. Give it to them. It's ten to two. It's ten to two. So, do you want to go? So, do you want to go? I have to try to do it. I have to try to do it. Okay. Did you notice the pronunciation of two? Well, yeah, the two becomes very weak. So two is usually weak and not stressed. Stressed is not stressed because it's a grammar word. It's not usually a main word. So for example, we don't say, don't usually say, give it to them. So do you want to go? No, we stress main words and grammar words become weak. So give it. To them. Give it to them. To, 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 to them. Give it to them. So, do you want to go? Do you want to go? To go? To, 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 to. Do you want to go? So, do you want to go? So, you can see how to becomes weak. To, to, to. Want to go? So have a look at those examples from before again. Repeat after me. Give it to them. It's 10 to 2. So, do you want to go? I have to try to do it. Yeah, so you can see how the important words are stressed and 2 becomes weak. Give it to them. It's 10 to 2. So, do you want to go? I have to try to do it. I have to try to do it. Okay. Let's have a practice. So, a good way to practice is by using the time. 
So have a look at the clock. What time is it? It's... Well, there are two ways you can tell the time. Um, American English, it's 1.50. British English, we often say it the other way. It's 10 to 2. So it's 10 minutes until the next hour. So 1.50 means 10 to 2. 10 to 2. 2.50, 10 to 3. 3.50, 3 10 to 4. So this is common in British English. So because it uses two, let's practice using British English. Have a look here. We have one, two, three, four, five different times. Pause the video and can you pronounce it using the weak two? Okay, let's have a listen. Okay, listen to me. What time is it? It's 25 to 9. It's 10 to 1. It's 20 to... <laughs> it's 20 to 9. It's 5 to 12. And then 45 is quarter. Quarter. It's quarter to 6. One more time. It's 25 to 9. It's 10 to 1. It's 20 to 9. It's 5 to 12. It's quarter to 6. Okay, so you can see how the time in the British way uses t -t -t -t. 25 to 9. 10 to 1. 20 to 9. 5 to 12. Quarter to 6. Have a look at your watch. Have a look at your clock. What time is it now where you are? Okay. Also, two is one of the top 10 words in English, the top 10 most common words. So two is the sixth most common word in English. So pronouncing it with the schwa is very, very, very common. So have a look at these examples here. Just pause the video. Have a go by yourself. Try and say these examples using the weak form. So not, I want to try. Want to try. T -t -t want to try. Pause the video. Have a go by yourself first. Okay, if you're ready, listen to me. Want to try. Have to try. Go to school. Listen to music. Send to him. Come to me. Get to bed. Say it to them. Used to like. Like to try. Seem to be. Try to find. Okay. Want to try. Have to try. Go to school, listen to music, send to him, come to me, get to bed, say it to them, used to like, like to try, seem to be, try to find. Okay, so you can see how to is super common, it's a very common word, so naturally, in everyday conversation, it's weak. I want to try, you have to try. Let's go to school. Ta, 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 ta. Okay, great. Uh, that's it for this uh, video. Check out the link for more connected speech videos. Also, uh, contractions of have uh, and all the others. Thank you very much and see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye. Hello, welcome to a new video. Today, another video about weak forms. Uh, weak forms with the word can. So let's get started. 
So as we saw in the other video, uh, weak forms are syllable sounds that become unstressed in connected speech and are often pronounced as a schwa, the schwa sound, the uh, uh, uh. For example, teacher, uh, 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 about. So it's unstressed from back here, uh, uh, about. So have a listen. I have four examples using can. How do you notice? What do you notice about the sound of can? Listen carefully. Modern robots can walk. Modern robots can walk. They can run. They can run. They can do lots of things. They can do lots of things. They can even dance. They can even dance. Okay, did you catch it? So, yeah, it's often weak. So can is usually weak and not stressed when it's in a, a longer sentence. Modern robots can run. They can even dance. So it's not can, but can, 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 can. It's weak, not stressed. So you can see here the keywords, robots, run, they're stressed. And can becomes with the schwa, k -k -k -a 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 -a. can. Robots can run. They can even dance. K -k 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 can, can. So let's listen to those uh, four examples again. Maybe repeat after me. Modern robots can walk. They can run. They can do lots of things. They can even dance. Okay. So you can see how uh, the key words, the important words are stressed and can becomes k -k 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 can can. Modern robots can walk. They can run. They can do lots of things. They can even dance. Okay. Pause the video, have a practice by yourself if you like. Uh, but sometimes can is stressed and pronounced with a ah, 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 can. And sometimes, like we said, it's weak. Let's check that out. So I have a short conversation here. Just listen carefully. Can you notice the difference in how to pronounce can? Can you dance? Yes, I can. Can you? No, but that robot on TV can dance. That robot can dance? Really? Yeah, it can do lots of things. Wow, yeah, it can. One more time. Can you dance? Yeah, I can. Can you? No, but that robot on TV can dance. That robot can dance? Really? Yeah, it can do lots of things. Wow, yeah, it can. Okay, pause the video, listen again if you like. So, for short answers, can is often stressed with a ah, ah, sound, especially when can is the last word. For example, can you dance? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I can. Can you dance? Yes, I can. So it's stressed. And then as we said, in longer sentences, can is usually weak. No, but that robot on TV can, 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 can dance. Yeah, it can do lots of things. So you can see it changes, can, 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 can. One more time. Can you dance? Yeah, I can. Can you? No, but that robot on TV can dance. That robot can dance? Really? Yeah, it can do lots of things. Wow, yeah, it can. Pause the video, listen again if you like. 
Okay, so you can see here different ways to pronounce can. Can you dance? Yes, I can. Can you? No, but that robot on TV can dance. That robot can dance? Really? Yeah, it can do lots of things. Wow, yeah, it can. Okay, great. So hopefully that's a quick uh, explanation of the ways to pronounce can, stressed, and can. If you're interested about what I'm talking about, it's these robots, the Spot Mini robots. Have a quick YouTube, have a search. They are pretty amazing from a company called Boston Dynamics in the USA. So check it out. They can dance, they can run, they can pull, they can jump. They're pretty incredible. So check it out. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Um, check out the other videos. Um, there's a weak form using two, like 10 to two, 10 to two. And contractions of have, would have, becomes would have. So yes, this is all weak forms. Check it out and see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.